when God created man originally, he gave man more powers than the devil. Are you aware of that? But when man committed the sin of disobedience, man lost the powers to the devil. And the devil became more powerful than man because of sin. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us from sin. And do not forget, man lost his power because of sin. So when Christ redeemed us from sin, he restored back the powers to us. So what that means is that the devil is no longer powerful. He does not have more powers than us. We are more powerful than the devil. So is it in the Bible? Yes. Jesus Christ said, I give you power and authority over the devils. The devil does not contend it. Too. That is the funny part of it. He has never contended it. So if you read Colossians 2.15, the Bible says that having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them, triumphing over them in it. That scripture means that he stripped the power and authority of the devil when Jesus died on the cross. And he gave us back the powers. So the powers were restored back. What am I trying to say today? The devil does not have power over a child of God. His weapon is not power. The weapon of the devil is tricks. He uses tricks as his weapon. Anyone that is deceived by any of the tricks of the devil suffers in that area of life. Whether the person is a Christian or not, whether the person is prayerful or not, whether the person is nice or not, the person suffers. You know, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, they were nice people. They had good relationship with God. Are you aware of that? In fact, my Bible tells me that God was always visiting them every evening at the cool of evening to discuss with them, to gist with them. So they had a good relationship with God. But yet... When the devil deceived them with his tricks, they suffered. And they were driven out of the garden. People who were gisting with God every evening. <laughs> ah, ignorance is not an excuse in the spirit dream. Sin has forgiveness, but ignorance leads to destruction. Anyone that is deceived by any of the tricks of the devil suffers the same way Adam and Eve suffered. Whether the person has a good relationship with God or not. His weapon is trick. This is the reason some people pray and fast so much and they still suffer so much. Because prayer and fasting is not a solution to the tricks of the devil. If prayer and fasting were to be the solution to the tricks of the devil, most of you wouldn't be here. In fact, none of you would be here today. Because I'm sure you have, you have prayed a lot. You have prayed enough. Or I think you have not prayed enough. Hello? I'm not criticizing prayer. God forbid. After all, we have been praised since I came in here. But prayer is not the solution to the tricks of the devil. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Anytime one is deceived by any of the tricks of the devil, the person suffers in that area of life. And on the other hand, anytime one discovers any of the tricks of the devil, the person prospers in that area of life. The devil has so many tricks, but there are some of his tricks that are generational tricks. I call them generational tricks in the sense that they affect a whole generation. <laughs> Some of his tricks have affected several generations, not just one generation. I call such tricks generational tricks. Today, I'll be revealing one of the devil's generational tricks that he has been using against this generation. The trick affects most people in this generation. Most people. Almost everybody, but not everybody. There are few people who are not affected by the tricks. But there are very few, very, very few.
This trick is called the trick of love. The trick of love. When an unmarried person is affected by the trick of love, the person will experience delayed marriage and late marriage. And in some cases, may never get married again. When a married person is affected by the trick of love, the person will experience frustration in his or her marriage and may separate or divorce if care is not taken. The trick of love has contributed immensely to the breakdown of the marriage system on earth. Today I will fully expose it and by the grace of God your understanding of my message today will empower you to do exploits not just in your marriage but in every area of life. I have titled my message The Trick of Love. The Trick of Love. What is the trick of love? Before revealing the trick of love to you, it is important I let you know that the love I'm talking of here is not God's kind of love. I'm talking of emotional love. The love that is based on feelings, affection, affectionate love. That's the kind of love I'm talking of, okay? What is the trick of love? The trick of love is the trick that the devil uses to make people believe that they should marry with their love. I repeat. The trick of love is the trick the devil uses in making people believe that they should marry with their love. This trick is a generational trick and has been affecting this generation. Virtually, virtually everybody in this generation is affected by this trick. Everybody believes that he should marry who he loves or who he or she loves. But today, I, it is my pleasure to let you know that it is a trick of the devil. <laughs> it is a trick. Before I continue, I would like you to know that every trick of the devil looks like the original. That's why it is called a trick. No trick of the devil is easily detectable. So if you see a trick of the devil, you may not know. If the tricks of the devil are easily detectable, then people wouldn't be falling prey to the tricks. So what he does is that he gets a particular doctrine of God. He twats it a little bit. He makes it, it will still look like the original, but it will not be the original. There will be a slight difference, but that slight difference, once anybody puts it into practice, it will affect such person. It will have a devastating effect on that person because it's no longer a right doctrine. The doctrine has been twatted. So every trick of the devil looks reasonable. They make human sense. They make logical sense. So if you use human sense of reason to reason it, it will make sense to you. Okay? But they don't produce results. So the devil says, marry who you love. But that is not the right doctrine of God. God says, love who you marry. The devil says, marry who you love. God says, love who you marry. They are not the same thing. They look similar, but they are not. The right doctrine of God is, love whoever you marry. The devil says, marry whoever you love. They are not the same thing. But if you are not careful, you will accept the first one, which is the doctrine of the devil. And people are suffering because of that doctrine. So everyone is busy looking for love that does not exist. But before going to that, let us first establish the fact that it is a trick 
of the devil before we continue. Because if we don't establish that fact, you may not give me a listening ear. So let us first, I know that several years in your life, if not all your life, you have been hearing that you ought to marry who you love. And today, I'm telling you something different, that it is a doctrine of the devil. So how do we know whether I'm saying the right thing or not? The Holy Bible is the only basis of authority we have in Christianity. Every right doctrine is scriptural. And no wrong doctrine can be found in the Bible. Any doctrine we find in the Bible, we accept it, whether it makes human sense or not. And if we don't find a doctrine in the Bible, we don't accept it, whether it makes human sense or not. Listen, there is nothing missing in this Bible. Everything we are practicing today, our great-grandfather started it. There's nothing we are doing today they've not done. They may not have electricity or new technology, but everything like marriage, love, they started it. I'm going to go to the Bible today to find out the right doctrine of love. What are the right doctrine of love is to love who you marry or to marry who you love. So for our case study today, we'll be using the marriage of Isaac and Rebecca. Why have I chosen the marriage of Isaac and Rebecca? I will tell you. Isaac was a covenant carrier. The Christianity we have today is as a result of the covenant God entered with Abraham. That covenant was passed from Abraham to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob, before it got to us. If any of them had made a mistake, there would probably be nothing like Christianity today. So, I am sure that how they got married must be the will of God. Don't you think so? Because they are covenant carriers. That's why when you pray, you say, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the God we are serving. So let's find out how Isaac got married. Whether he married who he loved, or he loved who he married. Genesis chapter 24. Now something happened in the book of Genesis. Isaac wanted to marry, and Abraham called his servant and said to him, go to my village, go to my kindred, and look for a wife for Isaac. It was a servant that he sent. A servant. <laughs> when the servant got there, he met Rebecca and proposed marriage to Rebecca on behalf of Isaac. The family members of Rebecca accepted. When they accepted, something else happened. You know what they said to the servants? They said to the servants, okay, we have accepted, but allow the damsel to stay with us for some days before you go with her, at least for 10 days. They did not ask for more, they just asked for 10 days. And the servant said, no. <laughs> I love that servant. He said, what are you telling me? If the Lord has prospered me, allow me to go with her. If not, let me go. <laughs> I love that servant. He said, what are you doing? The Lord has prospered me. Why should I wait for 10 days? The servant was in a hurry. <laughs> he was in a hurry to take the bride home. You know what they said? They now said in Genesis 24, verse 57, let's read verse 57. They say, okay, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. Verse 58, they called Rebecca and said unto her, will thou go with this man? And she said, yes, I will go. Are you seeing the scripture? Did she pray? Did she ask about Isaac? Now, let me let you know something important. As of this time, she had never seen Isaac before. She did not know how Isaac was. She did not know whether Isaac was tall or short or fat or slim. She did not know whether Isaac was a stammerer or not. She did not know whether Isaac was black or white. She did not know anything about Isaac. And she accepted to marry him. The only thing she knew about Isaac was that Isaac was the son of Abraham. 
That was the only information she had. And listen to me, that is the only thing that matters in a Christian marriage. Your spouse must be a child of Abraham. How does it concern us in this dispensation? The Bible speaking in the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 7 says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. They which are of faith means Christians. So the Bible says that Christians are the children of Abraham. So you are not permitted to intermarry. You marry from the Christian community. That is the only thing that matters in a Christian marriage. The dancer accepted and she left with the servant. As they were approaching Isaac's house, she saw Isaac. The Bible records that Isaac was meditating in the field. And the moment she saw him, she thought that he came to welcome them. And she saw him. She didn't recognize him. She didn't know him. She didn't recognize her husband. Hello. She saw her husband. She didn't know him. Because as of that time, they had paid her bride price. The servant paid her bride price. She saw the husband and did not recognize him. And said to the servant in verse 65, Who is this man that has come to meet with us? And the servant said to her, It is my master. And the Bible records that she took her veil and covered her face. Because their tradition did not permit the groom to see the face of the bride before marriage. What a powerful tradition. In this dispensation, men do not just want to see the face. They want to test her cooking. They want to know whether she knows how to clean the house. They want to, some want to test in bed. And when you try to teach them, what would they say? They will say, Pastor, do you want me to marry a stranger? <laughs> now, she covered her face. In verse 66, the servant told Isaac all that he had done. Then in verse 67, I would like us to read verse 67 together. Genesis 24, verse number 67. The Bible records that an Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah and she became his wife and he loved her and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death now you see the process first she became his wife and he loved her did he love her before she became the wife she became the wife and he loved her that is the right doctrine of God. The right doctrine of God is that you must love who you marry. It's not the same thing with marrying who you love. They are not similar at all. That's why if you read the Bible, you will see where the Bible says, husband, love your wives. But you will not see any place the Bible says, fiancé, love fiancé. <laughs> if God wants you to marry who you love it would have been in the Bible love is, people like love a lot God would have put it in the Bible marry who you love, it would have been simple in the Bible, but it's not in the Bible it's not for us, it is a trick of the devil it's called the trick of love This message was brought to you courtesy of partners of Covenant Singles and Married Ministries. If you'd like to be a financial partner and change millions of lives, contact us today on 0806-2859-890 or 0802-717-3678. God bless you.